Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Jenna, and it is lovely to have you with us. And to those of you who are worshiping with us from worshiping with us from home, we're happy to have you with us today as well. We have some special guests this morning. It is Boy Scout Sunday. As I am starting to learn, being a charter organization for a Boy Scout troop is different depending on each organization, and our scouts here to, are here today to share a bit of an update about the troops and to be a part of our service today. So uh, this is an opportunity to get to know some of the kids and the adults who are in our buildings, uh, each and every, our building each and every week. With that, then, I would like to invite our Cub and Scout leader to come up. Without, without your guys' support, uh, 
these events they just they just could not happen. So thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, I'm Jim Kowalewski. If you don't know me, I'm the Chartered Organizational Rep for Troop 198. Uh, as these guys said, it was a tough year. You know, we're, we're starting to get back into the, what they call the new normal now. We've had uh, a lot of scouts, you know, leave over the last couple of years and a lot of adult, uh, uh, adult helpers, you know, so we're, uh, we're trying to get back onto our feet. Uh, in 2022, we actually added eight scouts into the troop, so that was a, a good start for our, our group. Um, our, big, our big thing with uh, scouts is we do camping. Uh, we go out for a camp out once every month, uh, summer, spring, even winter time. In the winter time, we, do, uh, we don't do tents, we do cabins and, and, and do outdoor activities. But, a kind of review of stuff that we have done. We uh, camped and we saw eagles up at Starved Rock State Park. We camped and canoed at, uh, uh, on the Rock River. Uh, we did an urban backpack. We took a train from, to downtown Chicago, um, went around Chicago, saw some of the big sites, went to the planetarium, then took a train back here into uh, the local area and then we camped overnight. Uh, we traveled to Michigan and did a bike tour. Some of us, this was somewhat of a, of a BSA uh, outing. Uh, so we did somewhere between, scouts were able to do between 15 to 50 miles uh, for a bike. Uh, we traveled to Blue River, Wisconsin, and we were able to uh, cave, we were able to camp inside of a cave for a whole weekend which the boys really enjoyed. They were able to explore the whole cave inside and out, coming up muddy and everything. They loved every minute of that. Uh, we also took another uh, backpack. Oh, we went to another weekend in Wisconsin to Camp Crown, and we also uh, we did road BMX bikes on their pump track. And then right before quit Christmas, we went to Lifetime Fitness here in Vernon Hills. The boys had a fun night of playing games, they did, you know, playing ball, rock climbing, and swimming, and then Pastor was gracious to let us come back here and spend the night at a lock-in, so most of the kids were that tired in the morning from staying up all night playing their video games. Uh, you might have also saw us around at the Moneyline days. We set up a monkey bridge that we do every year uh, down in Cracklauer Park, so kids can come along and, and, and go over this bridge that we set up. Uh, our big outing is Camp Kajwan. If, you, if you're if you not aware of it, um, Camp Kajwan is a, a Boy Scout run camp in northern Wisconsin, about four hours away. So the boys leave on a Sunday morning and they don't come back until Saturday afternoon the following. So that's six nights of uh, camping. They do, they earn merit badges and they also work on their scout rank advancement. And we had seven scouts that had attended that for the week. And then we also had the Christmas tree sale here at, uh, at uh, St. Andrews, as most of you are aware. Uh, we sold, between us, the Cub Scouts, and the youth group, we sold over 250 trees. Uh, we always get positive feedback from many people in the community saying how, you know, it's one of the best tree sales. They come back year after year, and then they tell their friends. So um, we're very happy to uh, help out the community and, and do that for one of our largest fundraisers. Uh, Peter's not here. Peter Schoenfeld, uh, he's, he's the one that, he's the person that runs the tree sales here for uh, St. Andrew, and he's going to be retiring this year. So I wanted to uh, congratulate him and give him some recognition. But, And then we have three scouts that are going to go in front of the board in the next coming months for their uh, to try and obtain their Eagle Scout rank. So that's a it's a big uh, big recognition for us. And then we also for the Boy Scouts we're going through a new uh, leadership. Uh, some of you know Dave Brooks. He's our scout leader. He's the troop master and he's been here at, at St. Andrews for over 30 years. He is. He's decided that he is going to be retiring. He's going to become our troop master emeritus. 
Um, Sean Bidner, he is not here at this uh, at this service, but he's going to be taking over at our uh, as our new troop master. So um, I'd like to thank Pastor and the and the members here. Like Eli said, none of this has been done without you and your support. You know, with letting us use the building and. Um, everything that you guys have done for us, we greatly appreciate it. And then Jorge and myself and Eli will be here after the seat, after the service. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, we'll be glad to talk to them. Thank you. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. So that we may be in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen me with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We remain standing as we sing our gathering hymn, number 448. This is the Spirit's entry now.
8. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray.
Our first reading this morning is from Genesis, the 12th chapter, beginning at the first verse. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. 
for no one could do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him will have <coughs> eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not come, did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> Beloveds of God, grace and peace to you in the name of the Holy One. Amen. In a passage that contains one of the most well-known and well-loved verses in Scripture, John 3.16, and if you're like me, 3.16 and 3.17, we often lose sight of Nicodemus. He approaches Jesus in the middle of the night, hoping to remain unnoticed and unseen, hoping that no one will be able to report on his extracurricular activities. And then everything that happens in this conversation under the cover of night will eventually be brought into the open in the light of the day. But for now, we sit with them in the shadows, driven to know more about Jesus, whom he believes God has sent to the people, Nicodemus asks, well, he doesn't actually start with a clear question. He begins the conversation with a statement. Can you, can you just picture it for a moment with me? You have these two men sitting in the flickering light of a candle or the dying hearth, as one of them says, you must be from God. Look at all the awesome things that have happened. Now, by this point in John, Jesus has already been claimed by God in his baptism, and he performed the miracle at the wedding in Cana. In case you've forgotten that, it's where he turns an extraordinary amount of water into very, very good wine. Now, we don't know what, if anything else, has happened by this point, what else Jesus has done. We only know what has been recorded in Scripture. But Nicodemus is reacting to at least a couple of things Jesus has done as a testament to, at the very least, being sent by God. And then he just leaves it there. He doesn't ask a question, doesn't appear to say anything else, and then Jesus decides to, to respond 
to a question that has not been asked. Kind of funny to me that Nicodemus would go through all this trouble of sneaking out in the middle of the night just to give Jesus his endorsement. And in my own imagining of the scene, I picture Jesus doing that, like, eyebrow nod, bemused expression thing, right? The one that says, oh, you think I'm the real deal, do you? Thanks. It's clear that, though, Nicodemus is eager for something from Jesus. And Jesus responds with an answer to the question Nicodemus was too reticent to ask. Not only am I, Jesus, the presence of God, but those who are born from above, recreated in the water of baptism by the power of the Spirit, will see in these things I have done the presence of the kingdom of God. I wonder if it's at this point that Nicodemus realizes he is in way over his head. What on earth does it mean to be born again? Or is it to be born from above? Or even to be born anew? The Greek word translated in our texture, or our text as from above, isn't even the only way to interpret that particular word. Jesus' statement is confusing, and that's before you get into the translation questions of what is he actually literally saying here. So Jesus continues to unpack what he means for Nicodemus, and Nicodemus remains confused. What does Jesus mean by all of this? You literally cannot be born again. You can't be born of your mother, or how does it, how would you even be born of the Spirit? Like, none of this makes sense. And then when Jesus says, aren't you a teacher of the law? How don't, how can you not understand this nuance? I don't hear judgment, but rather bemusement. That someone who has been trained to think about these things like this. Nicodemus, as a Pharisee, would have been trained to explore this nuance, to wonder about the what-ifs and to look at the minutiae and figure out what's literal, what's figurative, and to help make a way forward. But on this, Jesus, who he calls rabbi, teacher, Nicodemus is stumped. May not surprise you to know that I really like Nicodemus. His role in the Gospel of John gives me space for my own uncertainty, even as I am a well-educated religious leader. I had to go to four years of graduate school, four years of seminary. If he doesn't get it, and Jesus is still patient with him, still teaches him and invites him into more, then Jesus will be patient with me and continue to invite me into more. And so when we look at Nicodemus, he had every reason to think that he understood God. He was a teacher of the law, a well-respected member of a highly respected religious order. He was a leader within his community. And then Jesus shows up and starts changing things kind of like rearranging the seats a little bit, right? He upsets the status quo by offering new teachings and interpretations on who God is and how God is at work in the world. Maybe we think we know who God is, how God loves, how God saves, and who all is included in that. Maybe we think we have the answers. But in Nicodemus, we encounter someone who is unfinished in their faith. Someone who is desperately trying to be open to understanding what God might be up to in Jesus. So when Jesus tells Nicodemus that he needs to be born again by water and spirit, Jesus isn't being offhanded or glib. What he's really asking is, Nicodemus, will you let God work in your life, even if you think you have all the answers already? 
Jesus goes on to illustrate that believing in God, something that Nicodemus is actually really, really good at. Like he is really good at believing in God. But it isn't a thought exercise. is isn't something we just do with our minds, but rather it is also what we do with our hearts and our lives. The law of God, our church doctrines, the prayers and the creeds, all the ways in which we say we believe in God, these are useful, helpful, essential resources in our life of faith, and I love them. They contain the way in which we humans try to make sense of who God is and what God wants from us and how God wants us to live. But our intellectual assent, just saying the words and saying we believe them, it isn't what creates our relationship with God. Drawing from historian Diana Butler Bass, Debbie Thomas argues that to believe in something is to love it, to treasure it, to hold it as beloved, just as the German word, our English word, comes from, says. I don't know much uh, German, but what is the word for love in German? Believe in, be believe in, right? Believe in, believe. When we believe in something, we give our hearts over to it without reservation. Now, by the end of John's gospel, Nicodemus's heart will be on display in the full light of day as he helps to bear Christ's body to the tomb. There will be no ambiguity as to what he holds beloved, to what he cherishes. There is no containing how God was or is or will be at work in us, in the world, the whole world. Because the Spirit blows where it chooses. Our journey of faith has one destination, but the way to get there will be as unpredictable as the Spirit's own unpredictable path. But in the end, even should we still have questions, which I imagine we probably still will, Jesus looks at us and says, I love you. You are mine. I have died so that you might have life eternal. So let's give our whole hearts over to God. Let God be at work in our lives to say yes to Jesus, not just with our heads, but with our hearts and our lives to see where it is that the Spirit will blow us in our journey of faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to please turn to hymn number 353 and to please rise as you are able for our hymn of the day.
confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, 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 Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and died in the charity. He descended into the dead. He rose from the third day. Thank you. 
truth, let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all, all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's <laughs> Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. again. O God of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
worshiping with us from home, this is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. As we go now from this time of worship, who knows where the Spirit will blow us, but God goes with us and before us and sends us with his blessing. God, the giver of life, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. We remain standing as we sing hymn number 660. Peace, follow the way of Jesus. <laughs> 